What is going on guys? Welcome to the Jaff Man. I'm your host Jaff. Today's video is purely going to be a Ryzen 3700X build video. I thank everyone that's been joining me on my channel and giving me some steady growth. But this is purely going to be a build video, not going to be going into performance, how it runs. You'll have to wait till next week for that. And at this stage, I do apologize. I meant to upload this video a few days ago. Being a full-time dad, a full-time worker, and just having general life get in the way, it just didn't happen. So here it is, here's my build video, and enough of me talking really, let's get into it. So let's get that CPU in. Align the direction arrow on the CPU and the motherboard, things should just slot in. I'm going to be installing a M.2 NVMe drive. This one's by Adata, everything will be linked below. It has very good performance, similar to a Samsung NVMe drive and it is bloody awesome. Here is the CPU cooler that I showed you in a previous video. Just make sure it all lines up. I went for a random X silicon thermal paste method just because I felt like it. Get the CPU cooler bolted in with the springs. Bit difficult, but it shouldn't be an issue. Now, let's get that workstation ready. Luckily, the PC is on swivel wheels. Clear that desk. Get rid of everything, get all the build parts ready. Some boxes are for show, I'll be honest. But the old PC and the new parts are all side by side next to each other right now, at least in this editing phase of this video. There you can see all my parts, GTX 1080 Ti, some ML series fans, the barrel water cooler, the Ryzen 3700X of course, the ASOS, ASOS? ASUS ROG Maximus Crosshair, ROG Crosshair Hero 7 and a stack of water cooling parts. Some green braided SATA data cables, just because why not? Now, at this stage I have to drain the old loop. It was running great all this time without flaws and I must say, after doing this AMD build, Intel ran a lot easier out of the box. Is that a good thing? Well, yes, for ease of use and things like this, it most certainly is. But this video isn't really gonna be concentrating on my AMD user experience. You'll have to wait till Sunday or next week for that where I'll be uploading a video. And at this stage, I just wanna show you some weird build up on the block, even though I've been using top grade EK cryo fuel with distilled water. I had to take the block apart. At this stage, it's very good idea to clean your case because everything's going to be stripped out if you are doing an upgrade build get a little detailing brush or drop it or drop it again but the method should be get a little brush brush it all off vacuum it if you have to whatever needs to be the case it's the perfect opportunity whilst the case is naked because once the build is done you won't get a second chance let's get the radiators prepped get the fittings ready I've never done hardline water cooling before this. I've watched a ton of videos and I kind of just had to figure it out. There's no real way to learn without doing it yourself. And if you're scared, until you do it yourself, you won't really figure it out. Here, I'm just trying to figure out the different extensions I'll need to clear the fan and get the tube in without touching the fan. It is a bit of a difficult process. My younger brother decided to chip in and help out on this build. He was a bit camera shy and shy to say hello. The board is now fitted and it can all start to take shape. Fit them fancy SATA data cables. They're a lot more malleable than others I have used in the past, especially ones that you get in your motherboard box. So at this stage, it's looking like this. Already looks kind of pretty, but I don't like big fat cases for no reason. So these are my radiator setups, a 420 mil rad with the three case fans and a 280 mil rad with the ML series fans. Just saw my little brother checking himself out in the mirror there. But these are all the components in essentially. I'm gonna show you a quick bending tube little montage thing here. But essentially this is not a how to water cool video. I will be doing them after this experience in the future. A water cooling video, hardline especially, is coming up in the near future. But at this stage, it's just showing you 
for the sake of this build. I was able to achieve perfect bends with a 90 degree adapter and this bend you see at the top right was pretty much freehand with no adapters because it was all over the place. But even as a noob, I was able to achieve quite a decent look. So with everything in place now, it's time to cable manage. Not as bad as I expected. And this case goes a long way to help, the Fantex Evolve X. It's got very big deep channels on either side of the rear. Just a it's quick so boot to make sure everything's connected and it lights up, even though there's no active cooling. My choice of RAM, Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB, 16 gigabyte sticks, 32 gigs in total, 3200 megahertz CL16 out of the box with some possibility to overclock. I have already tried and I've had varying results, but I'll be talking about this in a future video. Now, it is very important at this stage to clean out the system. There's gonna be green liquid left from the previous build in the radiator and in the GPU block, well traces in the GPU block, but there's still definitely going to be some in the radiators. So I use an old reservoir as a funnel because I can screw it on the top and I fill it up with distilled water and this is the idea of cleaning it out. You fill it up with distilled water, flush it a few times and after a few times of flushing, the old fluid will completely be gone and you'll be left with clean distilled water and this is just a test loop see how it goes before it's dry try to turn it off but that didn't really work out now this is a disaster ah! where did it leak from is that the only leak empty this empty this get the bucket nevertheless i had to make some altercations there was an o-ring missing and the tube was the wrong size putting too much pressure on the joints also I had to do a little bit of a modification to the reservoir top. You see this case doesn't allow you to fit the pump or the reservoir very securely so I had to put a cable tie to allow the reservoir to be very secure without much flex. The mix of dye and fluid is also always a wondrous thing and you get to experience it slow time right here. It did look very pretty as it went round the loop mixing with that distilled water. I'll go silent here for a second because I don't really have a script, but the whole thing's running now. I'm confident it's not leaking. I've addressed the leaking issues. I've run it for about half an hour, an hour. There's no pressure buildup and the thing runs awesome. Some B-roll. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you maybe get some sort of inspiration from it. I was a first time hardline water cooler and although I've water cooled many other variations with soft tubes, this was my first experience going through this extreme route. It did come with its own difficulties and even Ryzen, putting water cooling aside, Ryzen wasn't all fairies, unicorns and ponies. It also had many difficulties just getting it to run right, especially when I'm used to everything working out of the box for the last two decades as an Intel user, unless you went to the extreme overclocking route. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, give me a thumbs up, talk to me in the comments below and make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I will catch you guys in the next one.